Hello and welcome to the AI Research Roundup. I am Alex, and today is May 9th, 2025. We are looking at Practical Efficiency of Muon for Pre-Training, a research paper from Hugging Face's trending list published just five days ago. This paper introduces Muon, a type of second-order optimizer, which is a method to adjust an AI's internal settings. It shows Muon trains large language models more efficiently, especially with large batch sizes, that is, processing lots of data at once, and also explores using Muon with maximal update parameterization, or MUP, a technique for efficiently transferring optimal training settings from smaller to larger models. All right, so this first figure really visualizes that efficiency gain. It plots the number of computing devices against the total training time, in hours, for both Muon and another common optimizer, Adam W, as they try to reach a specific training loss of 1.3 nats. Loss here is a measure of prediction error, measured in units called nats, so lower is better. We see Muon, in orange, is consistently better than Adam W, in blue, reaching the target loss faster or with fewer devices. This expands the Pareto frontier on the compute time trade-off meaning Muon offers superior options for balancing compute resources and training speed. Okay, so building on that efficiency, these next charts really dig in to how much more efficient Muon is with data. We are looking at something called the quote token ratio across different batch sizes. A token is like a word or part of a word the model processes during learning. The plots show that Adam W consistently needs more tokens, sometimes 10 to 15% more than Muon to achieve the same training loss. This advantage for Muon, its superior data efficiency, becomes even more pronounced as the batch size, that is, the amount of data fed to the model at one time, gets larger. All right, so this figure here really clarifies that data efficiency with batch sizes. On the left, we see a general trend. As batch size grows, tokens needed for a certain loss stay flat. That is perfect scaling until you hit a critical batch size, or CBS. This critical batch size is the point where increasing the batch size further might not improve efficiency and could even reduce it. The right graph then compares muon to Adam W. It clearly shows Adam W hits its critical batch size sooner. Muon, however, pushes its own critical batch size much further maintaining its efficiency with significantly larger batch sizes. So beyond raw efficiency, how do we find the best settings for Muon? This figure visualizes their telescoping algorithm. It is a clever way for hyperparameter tuning, that is, finding the best initial settings. We are looking at shifted log loss on the vertical axis against learning rate, which controls learning speed, and weight decay, which helps prevent overfitting, both shown on a log scale. The stacked surfaces show the search grid for these settings shrinking as model size increases, efficiently zeroing in on optimal values indicated by red lines. This approach helps manage limitations of maximal update parameterization when scaling up. Okay, so after finding the best settings using that telescoping algorithm, these next graphs really put Mu onto the test against Adam W when training a large 1 billion parameter model. The top plots show training loss, again, in nats, against the number of training steps or iterations. Muon, in blue, consistently achieves a lower loss than Adam W, in red. And this advantage remains significant even late into the training process. Then, the bottom plots show the same comparison, but against actual training time, in hours. Here too, Muon reaches any given target loss noticeably faster. Building on that strong performance, we now turn to how these settings are actually found for such massive models. This is where a technique called Maximal Update Parameterization, or MUP, comes in. Maximal Update Parameterization is a way to transfer the best hyperparameter settings from smaller, cheaper-to-train models to the full-size ones. These charts here then show the efficiency of the telescoping algorithm for this tuning. The left plot shows compute saved, sometimes over 90%, compared to a full search on the big model. And the right plot shows that a significant portion of compute is still dedicated to training the final large model, ensuring robust results. So wrapping things up from this paper, it really boils down to two main things. First, the Muon optimizer. It is shown to be a more practical choice than Adam W for training large language models. It expands what we call the Pareto frontier, 
essentially giving better options for balancing training time against computing power, and this is largely due to its superior data efficiency, needing fewer tokens, those units of data the model learns from, to reach the same performance. Second, combining Muon with maximal update parameterization and their new telescoping algorithm offers an efficient way to tune these massive models. That is all for this AI research roundup. Thanks for joining me.